KwaZulu Natal Premier Nomusa Tube Ngube has announced her new executive council. Mbali Fraser has taken over as MEC of Education following Gwazim Shengo's resignation, who had been in the department since 2019. Shengu uh, joining us now uh, from KZN. Mr. Mshengu, let me thank you very much for your time. And uh, I'll start my conversation with um, the so-called voluntary action by at least some of the people who have vacated their posts the leadership, the political leadership in KZN saying this action was voluntary. But you are one of those people whose letter, resignation letter, I read just a while ago. And it's clear that you did not volunteer to leave this position. Instead, you were instructed to withdraw by your leadership, the new leadership in KZN. Was it explained to you why? Uh, thanks, Tolly. Uh, greetings to you and to, to the viewers. Um, Tolly, we serve at the behest of the African National Congress, and therefore we are subjected to its decisions. When I was assigned to be the MEC for education in 2009, I mean in 2019, it was a decision of the African National Congress. And I've always understood that I served at its behest and at any time. The ANC can ask me to to step out and allow anyone to come and steer the ship ahead. Mm -hmm. There were MECs before me. They, um, uh, they, certainly, as it has happened now, there will be MECs uh, after me. So what uh, happened was actually us respecting the decision of the movement uh, to say it has decided to reconfigure the executive, uh, working with the premium, and some of us will have to make way uh, for the new members of the Executive Council, and that's exactly what we did as discipline leaders of the movement. Mr. Mshengu, I'm going to ask you this question, and I'd like your response as a leader in your own right. You understand very well that the ANC leads in Guazulu Natal at the pleasure of the people of KZN because they are the ones who have put your party in power and therefore by extension have put you into government. Some people may not be comfortable with the double speak that is coming from the new leadership. Let me explain why I say they double speaking. You were at that conference which elected Sbonis Duma and the new executive and a, a commitment was given that they are not going to come in and try and remove people in government. But the exact opposite is happening right now. Should the people of KZN trust anything that comes, of, uh, that comes out of the mouth of the leadership in KZN right now? Look, Tony, the people of KwaZulu Natal voted the AIDS into power. They did not vote uh, a young man from the rural area of Moerifu. They voted the ANC into power, and it is the ANC that chose amongst the cadres it has deployed to the legislature me to be the member of the executive council responsible for, 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 for education. Now, it is clear that uh, the ANC, the current leadership, has also decided that uh, it will be better for some of us to be replaced by other comrades and cadres of the movement so that they can continue with the work of the nation. I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident, Tony, that uh, the sitting leadership is capable of managing the transition, but also of, of explaining whatever issues uh, that the people of KwaZulu Natal may have. Uh, indeed, there was a commitment, and I think the leadership probably is still in line. I mean, there was no commitment, Tony, that uh, they, will, they will retain all of us in the executive. Uh, I've never heard of such a commitment. But what I've heard is a commitment that the leadership will lead the project of unity and avoiding the disintegration of the organization. And I'm quite confident that this leadership that we have will be able to, to sustain us through that tra trajectory, which is necessary for the people and stability of Kwasun Natal. That is why we have also decided that as leaders of the movement, we have a responsibility to aid 
the ALC in managing the transition and ensuring that there's stability within the movement as well as the party. Hence, we then said when this decision was communicated, the only thing that we could do was really to thank the ALC for affording us a chance to serve the people of Kwazulu Natal at its behest. I take it then that it is your considered view that the inclusion of the former Premier, Sikhle Zegalala, into the new Executive Council is part and parcel of that managing of the transition? I'm sure the leadership uh, would not have taken any decision knowing that it will be to the detriment of the organization and the people of Kwasul Natal. Uh, that is why I'm saying I'm comfortable that their decisions were best uh, processed and thought of such that uh, they will aid the ANC and the people of Kwasul Natal as we all engage uh, in the battle to transform the lives of our people for better. Those of us who are now no longer members of the Executive Council will continue to serve the ANC and to serve the people of Kwasul Natal without any title and in whatever platforms and areas we find ourselves in because we joined this movement solely to make a lifetime commitment to the service of, of the people. When we joined, none of us knew that at some stage the organization will make us hold uh, critical positions of authority and power. But uh, we also knew at a time when we were deployed that at any given time the ANC may ask us out as it has happened. And all that we can commit to is to continue to serve the people wherever we are placed. Yeah. The Premier, the new Premier, as she announced these new positions, and she did make mention that the President was informed and her words were national government advised that collective leadership is key. You've said in your statement that as you leave this portfolio of education, you're not going to sing your own praises. The people of KZN are going to do that. But I will ask you the question about what you think your successes and perhaps weak areas were, and where do you think the new person who leads this, this portfolio now needs to focus their attention on? You are making me to do exactly what I wanted to avoid it, Tony, but with that as it may, um, I do think that uh, one of the major victories that we scored uh, as a collective in the sector, one was to ensure that there's stability um, in the sector. Uh, education in Wazul Natal is the biggest system of education in the country. Mm -hmm. And one thing that you can't risk is to have it uh, under conditions that are not stable. So we have been able to work together with the unions, SGPs, and other critical stakeholders. One, first ensure that there is stability in the sector. But secondly, we set our eyes firmly uh, in improving the conditions of uh, the schools and learners in rural as well as in township areas, because we appreciated and understood that these are areas that were neglected in the past. They were underdeveloped, they were under-resourced and underfunded. And our aim as we bring about the better education for all, it was clear that uh, we need to make sure that we take this better education, these better resources uh, to the schools in rural areas as well as in township areas. We will have seen uh, over the past three years that um, most of the time we found ourselves building new schools, uh, deploying new technology, uh, and ensuring that there is sufficient staffing, particularly in rural as well as in, 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 in township schools. We have ensured that um, the metric results uh, continue to improve uh, in spite of the two years uh, which uh, in the main were affected by COVID, but we'll remember that in 2019 we made sure that uh, we, we break the record and, and, and go up to 81%, it was for the first time in the province. Uh, just last year results indicate a significant improvement in terms of quality uh, of, of the results. Uh, you'll remember that when the minister was announcing the results, KZN was leading in terms of uh, bachelor passes, in terms of distinctions, as well as, as diploma passes, which meant that uh, our system that we have put into place were now starting to respond positively, as those results that, that, uh, that, we, that we have produced. But also, we decided not to focus only on metric, but to make sure that uh, there is, a, there is a, a better performance from grade R right up to, up to metric so that you know exactly that a child, by the time it reaches metric, uh, you don't have to spend more time or money 
in terms of intervention programs, but you know that it's one person who's supposed to be in that area. So we started also focusing in the entire system, and for the first time since 2019, in fact, from 2019, we started to produce, as we're releasing the metric results, we'll also release the performance of the whole system uh, from, 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 from great art. So those are the man, amongst other things that uh, we achieved. We made sure that uh, the department now is able to spend its funds uh, fully as well as conditional grants. You know, when I came in 2019, uh, the department had registered an underspenditure of 600 million, uh, which was quite unexplainable and um, was an embarrassment in a, in a sense. So we have really been able to put a number of systems in the department, which, in my view, um, have started to start. I mean, have started to produce results. But as I said, it is the people of KwaZulu Natal as well as future generations that uh, will make uh, the judgment. In terms of the challenges, the major, major challenge mm. are the financial constraints. You will recall clearly that uh, at some stage we had to deal with an issue of possible retrenchment of educators. And without an education class, then you can't have a proper functioning system of education. And these budget cuts that have been effected against the department have crippled our, our plight in terms of uh, dealing with, uh, for example, the infrastructure backlog with speed, making sure that there is uh, enough teachers in class, but also in terms of other, other innovative ways that wanted to deploy or employ rather, to make sure that the Department of Education produces the intended results. So those are the, amongst other things that, um, as I leave this department, I am proud of because we have achieved them together as a collective. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mshengu, I'm going to try and um, ask this question to you, and I'm asking for a brief answer because of time constraints. So the shorter you answer, the quicker we're able to wrap it up. So close to the general election, basically the next administration, which comes in in 2024. So you only have one year between now and 2024. Was this cabinet reshuffle necessary? And it's a wholesale change, by the way. Leadership of the ANC has failed so, and we are indeed in full support of it. We'll continue to work for the ANC to make sure that we deliver a decisive victory uh, in the 2024 uh, elections. The reason I ask you that, Mr. Mshengu, is that some people in KZN will say this was not necessary. If anything, it's a disruption in the governance of that province because they will say what tangible changes will these new people in these portfolios bring about that would not have been completed by the people like yourself who are exiting. And I'm asking you this again as an ANC leader to say, do you think that your party, by doing all of these ructions that some people may view as unnecessary, is endearing you to the electorate? Do you think you'll be returned to power come 2024? Look, Colin, we definitely, if we continue to work hard, as we have tried during our term, we, we will be retained uh, in, into power. People have different views, uh, including in the ANC. Uh, there are people who are expressing different views. But what is important is that once a decision is taken, we all rally behind that decision and work for it so that uh, there is no disruption in the movement. So between now and 2024, what is important for the ANC is to focus on delivery of services and servicing the people so that we are indeed retained in, 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 I mean, after, after the elections. But I'm quite certain that uh, the people will continue to, to give ANC this necessary trust and which will continue to be in power beyond 2024. Kwasim Shengu, let me thank you very much for your time and availing yourself when we called on you. So well, that's uh, the former MEC of education in KwaZulu-Natal.